<clears throat> good morning, good morning. It's me again. So I'm going to do, I don't know, two or three videos. I'm just, sorry, my hair's all up in my grill. Um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be led by the Lord this morning. Um, I just feel really strong to share this other message right now. So, um, as I'm praying. So, sometimes people think I'm a whack job, like, Shell, you're a whack job. But then as the years go by, I always, and I mean always, get apologies. Not that I care, but I always get apologies. Shelly, you weren't off your rocker. It just, it just took time to play out. And so, as one of my best friends says, you're always two years and two days ahead of schedule. And then other people are like, yeah, no, you're right on schedule. So it, it all depends, right? But the point of the matter is, is I said, well, it's on schedule. It just depends if you delay or not. So, because the Lord's really good, he'll go around that wagon again and again and again and again until you get it, okay? So people might say, oh, you know what? The timing was off. It's like, mm, no. What happens is, is that the Lord wants us to get it the first time. But if we're stubborn, if we're rebellious and we don't listen, we go around the wagon into, again until we do listen. And that's how merciful he is, okay? So that just means we waste a lot of time. And I don't want to waste time. I want to hearken unto the voice of God the first time. When the Lord says the first time, like, like you would a little kid, like get in the car or take out the trash, we, I always want to listen to the first time because delayed obedience is disobedience and I never want to have disobedience, okay? So remember that delayed obedience, people say, oh, it's not the timing of God. No, that's BS. <laughs> delayed obedience is disobedience, okay? I want you to remember that delayed obedience is disobedience. Is he merciful and kind and he'll have the wagon circle again? Mm-hmm. But this time you pay a bigger cost. So every time you disobey, and you don't hearken unto the event or the voice of God, you have more troubles and trials and tribulations. Why is that? Because God's going to refine us in the refiner's fire, but you're out from the umbrella protection of God, bottom line, because you're not lining up with what his agenda is. I know I'm pretty harsh, but I don't try to be. It's just the voice of God. It's just people are so used to watered down messages that just me being me, they're like, oh my gosh, that's so harsh. It's like, am I harsh or am I just telling you the truth? It's kind of like when you commit a crime and you, the police officer comes and he says, it's time for you to get hauled off to jail. Well, is, is the police officer giving him a rough message or did he commit the crime, right? So look at it from that perspective. So here's the deal. Again, I don't know who this is talking to, but it was several, several years ago and I won't say the person's name. Um, I met this person and uh, I began dating him and within a very short amount of time, he wanted to marry me. And... Um, and so, you know, I was entertaining that idea. I was just like, Lord, is this you? Is this God? Whatever. And uh, we hit it off pretty good. And um, and uh, he had been divorced. It was a real recent divorce. And he was in a Christian marriage, and it was a Christian family, and his parents are Christians, and the other parents are Christians, and on the surface it looked all amazing. But behind closed doors, it was a really loveless marriage. I mean... There was like no intimacy, like to the rest of the world. They were this cute little couple. Everybody thought they were just all perfect. And, you know, he was always like, Mr. Yeah, everything's great. When in reality, he was faking it half the time. And and he didn't look at it as faking it. He looked at it as seeing the glass half full. I'm like, no, you're faking it. <laughs> so, because you're not being incongruent with your heart. And so anything other than that is not being true. It's just not being truthful. And so anyways, um, this gal behind the scenes was spending all kinds of money and she was super like um, controlling and super anal and she was all about the money. And so anyways, um, he finally had had enough. He just couldn't take it anymore. And so um, he was like, do I have a biblical right to leave? Well, she ended up, she ended up divorcing him. But in my estimation, he ended up finding out later that she was unfaithful, but at the time he didn't know it. And he was just dying on the vine, though. He goes, Shell, it was, I think it was 13 years, 13 or 15 years of just this absolutely loveless marriage. And um, and so he wanted to do the right thing. And I, anyway, so they got divorced, and then I started dating him. And I said, you know, I have this magical gift. I don't know what it is, okay? But um, every time that I've been into a guy, the ex-wife resurfaces, the ex-girlfriend resurfaces. So I always tease people. I'm like, well, if you want to get back with your spouse, just date me for a little bit. And, um, but it's very painful. I mean, I'm saying that, but it's painful as hell. So anyways, um, so, uh, I had a dream one night and my dream, I saw her like this huge python snake 
and um, and we're talking, they were divorced, okay? It wasn't like in, in between, they were divorced, divorced. And and she came in like a python and she snuck in the back bedroom and she like whistled, weaseled her way in as a snake would and crawled up on his bed. And, and then she convinced him in my dream to get back together with her because she found out about me. And, um, and all she was doing was using him for his money and manipulating him. She didn't love him. She acted like it. She had a borderline disorder, so she acted like it, but it was super clingy and it was like this charm, the cling, the guilt, the shame, and this vicious cycle over and over and over again. And she never would change because you know what? They really can't change unless they get deliverance. But anyways, um, so the next dad called him and I told him the whole story and he's kind of like, yeah, you're like losing your mind. No, 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 mark my words. In six months from now, you're gonna want me back and you're gonna you're gonna get back together with her because the Lord showed me that in two days you're gonna tell you're gonna say well you know what I should do this because she's a Christian and I'm a Christian and this is what the outside world thinks we need to do you know we need to reconcile blah 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 and I don't really love her like I love her she's the mother of my kids but I, I'm not in love with her like I'm in love with you but you know I, I need to do this and I said you're gonna regret it and I won't be around and so anyways um, he he did he got back together with her and they literally got remarried and everything and then um and then about within yeah six months later almost to the day um she left him and she took all of his money they end he ended up going through bankruptcy he ended up having to sell all of his houses through foreclosures he ended up losing his practice i mean we're talking major major stuff it took that boy four years to call me and when he called me he was like Okay, I thought you were a nut job at first, like, but you heard from God so extremely clear. Every single thing you said came to pass. She ended up marrying another guy. She ended up taking him to the cleaners. She ruined his reputation. She came after him like a, with everything in her. She harassed him. She stalked him. She did everything, every single thing that was in my dream. He lost everything. And it took him several years to come to his senses. And he said it was like the, it like Job. He goes, it was like, Job on steroids like it was horrible and um so anyways this person reached out to me not too long ago and they were just like you know is there is there any chance I'm like oh no 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 uh-uh I'm like but I'll be your friend and you know walk you through some inner healing and deliverance because of it <laughs> he was teasing me he goes so if anyone ever wants to know if you actually hear from God or not give him my number it might take a few years to play out but give him my number he goes I will never <laughs> I will never ever question you again and unfortunately I get that all the time and it's like people you know they'll be like chill I you're tripping you're tripping and I'll be like really unfortunately we're gonna see it play out I've been doing this a long long time and I come with humility it's not pride at all I just know the God I serve and I know his voice really well and so you know what I gave a really harsh word yesterday that was from God it wasn't from me and on a very serious note if you are in that situation or you have been a placator of it, if you have been um, a person who has aided and abetted, maybe not even on purpose, but you have, the word of the Lord still stands. And I'm gonna tell you one thing, just like my dear friend had to learn, it's like, you might think I'm nuts, and you might think it's way out there, but I have a track record that God has had my back all these years. And he means what he says. The Lord is going after the children. The Lord is going after all this. And just like my friend, he goes, I, it was my stubbornness and my rebellion that I didn't listen to you. And it was my fear of man that really didn't listen to you because on the surface, I didn't want anybody to think that my marriage failed. I didn't want anybody to think that, um, you know, I was the cause of it. I didn't want, I feared people more than I feared my own, more than I, I feared God. I didn't want, I wanted their approval more than my own happiness. And he goes, now he goes, but at the end of it, I lost it all anyway. And it's true. So whoever you are, whatever you're trying to hang on to in the natural, it's going to, it's going to dissipate anyway, because the Lord's going to have the last say. And when judgment comes, the Bible says judgment comes upon the house of God first. And so it's like, it's time for us to get our hearts right with the Lord. It's time for God to visit us in the night hours. And when it comes to children being abused, he's a fierce protector. The Lord is a fierce protector. And in this situation, there was also abuse from the mother to the kids. In this situation, it was the mom to the two sons. It's not always the man.
And you're saying, what kind of abuse? It was verbal, it was mental, it was emotional, it was psychological. The kids had stopped eating, the kids were throwing up, the kids were having panic attacks, the kids couldn't sleep, and they begged him even to leave, and he still wouldn't listen, even after my dream. But God's gonna have the last say no matter what. But I just found that interesting that um, he called me and uh, in total humility, after he has no money to even make his mortgage and he's lost his job and he's went through bankruptcy, foreclosed on several of his rentals. And he just said, I had to learn the hard way. So, so somebody listening to me today, I have another girlfriend who um, I had given her a word, I won't say her name, um, about three years ago, she had a son and he lived in the house and he was into all kinds of witchcraft and drugs and all that stuff. And she's like, well, you know, I said, honey, you got to get him out. She's like, why? And I said, because it's aching sin in your house. And she's like, what does that even mean? It's like, well, when he's doing all this behavior and you're going to pay the price tag for his behavior you're in the same house. And she's like, but Shelly, that doesn't seem right. It's like, I know what I know. You got to get the ache. You got to get the sin of aching out because if you don't get him out, then you're going to go under a curse. And that little girl, well, she's an adult. She almost starved, literally. I mean, and for two and a half years, she went through literal hell until she finally got this, this, get this person. Although it was her, it was her son. She loved him. He was a very abusive. He was narcissistic, borderline, schizophrenic, all kinds of stuff going on. <clears throat> but when she finally stood her ground, and kicked him out, all of a sudden she's prospering, all of a sudden she's doing really well. And it might even seem for a season when you have somebody in your house like that that you're prospering, but the end result is, is that it all falls apart. So I just wanna tell whoever's listening to me today, your beef is with God, it's not with me. What you've allowed, what you've condoned, even out of ignorance or even out of just being kind, the devil will take advantage of your kindness. The devil loves to abuse the giftings that God's given you. It's called enabling. So if God uses it for compassion, the enemy uses it for enabling. And until we get out from that umbrella, it might look like you're prospering at the moment until the hammer comes down because God is cleaning house and he's going after the children. And he's a fierce protector over children. So Lord, I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but God, I pray they would heed to the warning. I pray God that they would heed to the warning so they won't have to learn the hard way. I bind up every spirit of rebellion. I bind every spirit of pride. I bind every spirit where you feel like you can just do it yourself, where you can hang on to the reins. I bind every spirit of control in you that would try to hang on for dear life. Lord, I pray that these people at the sound of my voice would realize the pain has to exceed the pleasure in order for them to change. So God, I pray now for a Holy Ghost awakening. I pray for a wake up call. I pray that they would protect their children. I pray they protect themselves. I pray they protect their own heart, God. And just like my friend, who was a past boyfriend years ago, finally came and apologized to me, which I could have cared less about. God, he came to a census but it was after he lost everything. Lord, I pray that the people at the sound of my voice won't have to lose everything, that they would, they would heed to it, they would heed to it, knowing that you know what's in store for them, that you know what's in their future. Because Lord, when we lose everything, it's hard to hang on to hope. So I pray now that you would deal with our hearts. I pray now that you would deal with our hearts. And Lord, I don't know why you give me all these words to give to people that are tough, but I know it's because you love your kids. You only discipline those whom you love because you want to see us succeed and prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. So Lord, reach out your hand to the hurting and have people make the hard choices today so they have no regrets in the end. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. So today, I want you to ponder, get along with the Lord. So many times, you know, we can kill the messenger, but the message is still going to come forth. 
it might not be through me it might be through another pastor it might be through another prophet it might be through an apostle it might be through some girl at a thrift store the lord's gonna have his way he said he'll talk through a mule he could he can even the crocs will cry out it's like pay attention to what people are telling you even people who don't know the lord you're gonna find the same thread because god will have the last say and he loves to repeat himself so that if you have a deaf ear to him, he'll just keep repeating it. He'll keep repeating it. He'll keep repeating it. And make sure it's not the enemy you're listening to. It has to line up. And if it lines up to freedom, freedom, then you know it's the Lord. Because sin always binds us. And freedom is always from the Lord. All right. I love you guys. I have to uh, do a listing. And uh, I mean, work is busy. I am flooded in the best possible way. Okay, I love you guys so much. Have a wonderful morning. Bye-bye.